Number 317, Victory in Jesus. 317. <coughs> Jesus. Awesome. 
a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet. spirit shall sorrow no more, not a sigh for the blessing of rest. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. To our bountiful Father above, we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hallow. Good evening. Good turnout this evening. Tonight we're going to be reading from 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, we're going to begin reading about verse 15 and go down through the end of the verse there at verse 18. The, uh, looking at the idea that just the joy of growth. This afternoon, Hannah posted me a seven-month and one-week picture and uh, talked about how that she's cutting teeth and it seems to be a big thing for parents to take a monthly picture of their kids on the same blanket or quilt with the same stuffed animal and talk about the progress that they've made as they grow. And uh, growth is normal. If Mia wasn't growing, if her teeth weren't coming in, if you know there wasn't any progress, they'd probably have her up at Children's Hospital. Our text this evening has to do with spiritual growth, growing in grace. And this growth should be just as normal and natural to the believer as the growth of a, an infant, a small child. We read in verse 15 an account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or wrestle, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing that ye know these things before, be, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. There are a lot of joys in the Christian life. We can praise God for the joy of having our sins forgiven, of knowing that we stand in a right relationship with him. We can rejoice in the blessed assurance of divine sonship, of being made heirs to his family through the blood of Christ. We can face the future with optimism because of our assurance that death has already been conquered and the grave will have no final victory over us. 
Our hearts can be filled with joy as we think of the fact that Christ right now is preparing us a home at the end of our earthly journey. Along with all of these joys, we can be grateful for the joy that we experience as we recognize the signs of our daily growth towards spiritual maturity. None of us have arrived. We're all works in progress. And it's important that we take verse 18 as a challenge, a command and a challenge that we would grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ day by day. And we know that our spiritual growth, it does bring joy to our Heavenly Father. Um, I could, as I was reading this afternoon, Hannah's post, I could sense the joy that because Mia's starting to smack her lips together. It's getting her that much closer to saying mama. If that's what you need to believe. The first thing she says, says is going to be the first thing she says. So who knows, who knows what it will be. What, what's that? She already said that. Oh, okay. So. But you can see the joy on, on Jake's face just knowing that he's right there. But Earthly parents know an indescribable joy when they bring that firstborn, or any child for that matter, home from the hospital. If you can think back when you brought your firstborn home, you was afraid to break him or her. There's no, well, some of you brought them home in bulk. But uh, just worrying, you know, what, what do we do now, you know? We went through Lamaz, and Lamaz prepared you for, well, I thought it prepared you for uh, the delivery until I was in the room, and then I realized I was so unprepared. But when you go home with that child, there's a concern, there's a joy, but there's an anxiety that goes with it. And you want to make sure that you do well. But that, that joy of taking that, that child home, and uh, as the weeks go by and you see the baby's weight improve and coordination improves, and, and it's a really happy day when the, a child rec recognizes their parent maybe for the first time and smiles. But we can't imagine the agony really the indescribable agony in the hearts of parents, if something were to happen that prevents that normal growth from taking place. It's natural for parents to find joy in every stage of growth and progress of their children from childhood to adulthood. We still take great pride in our daughters and the achievements that, that they're constantly pursuing and achieving and and I believe that our Heavenly Father is also delighted and joyful to see His children grow. As children rejoice or find pleasure in the approval of their parents, to hear their parents say, I'm proud of you, or it was a job well done, or just some word of affirmation, even so the child of God can rejoice in the joy that we bring to our Heavenly Father. Our spiritual growth makes for joyful and effective service while we're here in this world. No one likes to be a loser. No one rejoices in being a failure. One of the greatest joys that an individual can know is that of achievement in any pursuit, anything that we put our mind to. This is also true, really, when it comes to our spiritual service and our Christian walk. Paul challenged Timothy to study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Not only did Paul want Timothy to be an effective servant for the Lord, he wanted him to experience the joy of being an effective interpreter of the word as he preached it into the hearts and lives of others. And then our spiritual growth brings personal happiness today, right now. I don't know if you can remember how when you were a child, maybe there was a, a doorway 
or a closet or somewhere where periodically your parents would measure your height. And they'd put a little line, even with the top of your head, and they'd write the date and maybe your age. And uh, a lot of times we would measure ourselves against our parents. Uh, Deanna's mom's family was just about all of them in over the weekend a couple weeks ago, and, and uh, Deanna's cousin Alda has a couple twin girls. And uh, the last time we saw them, they were significantly shorter. But now they're taller than Alda, and Alda says that doesn't take much. Alda's not very tall, but those girls are proud that they've surpassed their mommy. And uh, as we have grown through childhood, maybe you can remember that time that you caught up with your mom or your dad. Can you remember maybe a time when you were in school making a, a grade on an exam and feeling pretty good about that? That was progress. You brought it up from maybe a whole grade point. Spiritual growth can produce a harmful kind of pride and an attitude of self-righteousness if it weren't for the fact that the growth that we do make and the strides that we take are only made possible by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We can't do it ourselves. Whatever growth we experience, whatever strides we make in our Christian walk, it's because of the Holy Spirit in us. And uh, the Holy Spirit knows not only how to challenge us in the struggles that we face, but also how to keep us humble in the midst of God's goodness toward us. And I think it's right that we experience the joy of that progress in other areas of life, but we also know the joy of experienced progress in our spiritual growth. We take joy in maybe being promoted in our job or a raise or some kind of an achievement. Those who run 5Ks or compete in, in some manner in sports, they always feel good about winning. I think that we should also have joy when we experience progress in our spiritual growth. If we can look back to the beginning of this year even, because I think next week we surpass that halfway mark of the year. Half of this year will be gone already. Are you in a better place spiritually than you were on January 1st? Are you in a better place than you were yesterday? I really don't believe that we can be content on a spiritual plane that we've existed on before. We need to constantly be growing in that grace, constantly growing in knowledge, constantly getting stronger and our faith becoming stronger. And then that Christian growth also makes it possible for a, a joyful and abundant harvest. Paul encouraged the Galatian Christians toward spiritual growth and even significant achievement with the promise of a sure reward if they didn't faint and fall away before the harvest season. In Galatians 6, 9, he says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Success along the way in our Christian walk from day to day is, in many respects, its own reward. Some of you were teachers, and uh, many of us were parents. To watch a, a student... Graduation day will come and they'll receive a, a commendation of their professors or school administrators. For children of God, the day of rewarding will come when it's possible for us to hear those words of commendation from our Heavenly Father. And we should grow in that grace and knowledge. We should serve and live and labor that on that last great day, each of us can hear the Father say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I really don't believe that we can be content. As children of God, we can't just merely be content being a part of the family of God. We have to be constantly striving to grow. We can't remain in the nursery by God's grace, each of us can grow towards spiritual manhood or womanhood, maturity for the glory of God, for the good of others, and the personal satisfaction of our Heavenly Father. 
I believe that it pleases him when he sees us grow, just like it pleases Hannah and Jake to be able to post improvements and growth with, with Mia. But you better not blink. She'll be a teenager before you know it. So that's the lesson, as short as it is. I'm anxious to hear what you all might have to share this evening.